The Russo-Persian Wars are a set of five wars between the Russian Empire and the Safavid and Qajar dynasties that both occupied what is today modern-day Iran. The reasons for the conflict are over the strategically important Caucasus Mountains, which offered a natural obstacle for either side to want as a border. Caught in the battleground between these two empires would be the small kingdoms of Armenia, the most powerful of which would be the kingdom of Kartli Kakati, as well as a few Azerbaijani Khans who were initially under the vassalage of the Safavid Persian dynasty. The conflict between Russia and Persia really starts in 1634, when a guy named King Tamaruz I decides to invite a local group of Cossacks into his realm to build a fort. So they built the fort, but they built it on the south side of the Terek River, and the Terek River had traditionally served as the border between Russia and the Safavid Persian Empire. So by doing this, the Russian allied Cossacks inadvertently started what would become a bloodbath of a set of conflicts that would last well into the 19th century. The Cossacks lived there in relative peace for a time, until they decided to raid the wrong caravan. They raided the caravan that belonged to the Khan of Shimaki, and he paid homage to the Persian Shah. So, the Khan of Shimaki set out to destroy the Sunza River Fort. In a series of a few small battles, the Cossacks managed to defeat the Khan of Shimaki by using hit-and-run gunpowder techniques. When Shah Abbas II learned about this defeat, he responded by assembling his northern Khanates into a 20,000-strong army under the direction of the governor of Shiraz, Khosrow Khan. This much stronger army managed to send the Cossacks running, and they eventually burned their fort on the Tarek River. The army did not advance though, because for this time, the conflict would need to take a brief pause because both empires had much bigger problems to deal with. In the east, the Persians fought the Mughal Empire of India, and in the west, the Swedish Empire and the Russian Empire were already at war. Both Russia and the Safavids then called for a peace treaty, and everyone lived happily ever after. Except they didn't, because this is history and not enough people have died yet. The second war started about a hundred years later. After a series of events which featured the Afghans invading Safavid Persia, and eventually sending the head of the Persian Shah to the already invading Ottomans as a warning, the Tsar of Russia decided that it was his time to invade. The Tsar at this time was a six foot eight man named Peter. You may know him better as Peter the Great. When Peter heard the news that there was free land, he didn't care because what he wanted was the free water of the Caspian Sea that he wanted to put more of his beloved boats on. Peter had loved boats since he was a boy and whenever he became Tsar, he loved them even more because he could build them and blow shit up with them. So he took control of the largest lake in the world in this war, otherwise known as the Caspian Sea. He prepared a Caspian navy, and with a few ships he could already defeat the small and old-styled navy of the Persians. He sailed his new shining fleet around the Caspian Sea, which forced the Khans of Kumyuk and Derbent to submit their cities without even putting up a fight. Only one leader would stand up against Peter the Great, and that was the Sultan of Utmesh, Mahmud. Mahmud raised his full army of 16,000 men to face off against the Russian army, which consisted of 60,000 of the best trained soldiers in the world. Peter absolutely annihilated them, then moved to his city where he hanged all of the residents inside. After this, Peter went back to Moscow, leaving his generals behind to conquer as much of Persia as they could while in a race between the Ottomans and the Afghans. The new Shah, Tamas II, who was the only living son of the previously beheaded Shah, started his reign off by signing treaties and giving his lands to his enemies. In these treaties, the Russians would take all of the Caspian Sea territories that Persia owned, as well as about half of the Caucasus lands that they now split between them and the Ottoman Empire. Tsar Peter is made happy by this treaty. He now had a new playground for all of his boats in the form of the Caspian Sea, which is the largest lake in the world, and a nice border in the form of the Caucasus Mountains. Russia would strangely return these lands a few years later to the new Qajar Persian dynasty, which had taken over the place of the old Safavid dynasty. The idiot that did this was the new Tsar who ceded these lands for no reason and is stupid and deserves to be assassinated, which he eventually was. Anyways, the third Russo-Prussian War was started by a third party this time. A guy by the name of King Urkel II of Kartli Kakheti of modern day Armenia. This absolute badass of a guy was under the Qajar rule, but signed a treaty with Russia that allied him to the empire. King Urkel II had been trying to get a deal like this with Russia for a large part of his 75 year life, and finally this warrior king managed to do it. But this would come at a cost, as Persia would now be able to openly invade the small kingdoms that he ruled over for the past 33 years. Old Grandpa Urkel now had to fight the full force of Persia while he waited for his Russian allies to help him. He would meet the invading Persians outside of his capital of Tbilisi, in the field of Kristinsa. 
The king had defeated the Persians outnumbered a few times before in his reign, but never this bad. The odds were 5,000 of his own men versus 40,000 Persians. King Urkel, at the age of 76, fought on the front lines of this battle, charging headfirst into the Persian lines. Soon the Persian numbers would overcome his soldiers, but he was not ready to leave. Grandpa, let's go! You can't make me, I'm not going! Oh, Jesus Christ, can you guys go get him before he breaks his hip? Soon after he lost this battle, Persia would enter his lands and he was forced into the woods waiting for his Russian ally that seemed to abandon him. The Russians finally came a few months later, 40,000 men under the command of Valerian Zubov. These soldiers helped liberate King Urkel's lands and they even pushed southwards into Persia proper. That is until a new czar came to the throne named Paul. This is Paul, and Paul sucks. Paul sucks for a lot of reasons, but for this reason he sucks because he pulled Russian troops out of the Persian campaign abandoning King Urkel. Hey, where are you guys going? Sir Paul said we are to return. Paul, you take orders from a guy named Paul? Well, your name is Urkel, so... Well, you know, yeah, that's pretty fair. Another Persian invasion was imminent, until the Shah was assassinated when the campaign started by a few heroic Armenian servants. Urkel II ended up dying as a 77-year-old badass on his throne. The Fourth Russo-Prussian War started after the death of King Urkel's son who died a few years after him in 1801. After this, Russia annexed the tiny Armenian kingdom, only pissing off the Kojar Shah and Fath Ali Shah. Fath Ali Shah immediately gathered 100,000 men to take Armenia back from Russia. The early parts of the war were little skirmishes, but it would officially start in 1804. The Persians managed to successfully defend the city of Shirvan from Russian invaders in 1804 and push back Russia for another two years until 1806. In 1806, General Tistatonov, who is notorious for being a pompous fuck, managed to get the Khan of Baku to submit after a siege. But when he was proudly entering the fort, the Khan's men shot him and killed him. A new general was then put in charge, who captured key cities like Derbent, Nuka, and finally the tricky Khan of Baku. The war would come to a standstill soon though, because in 1807, Napoleon Bonaparte crushed the Russian army at the Battle of Austerlitz. After this, he managed to convince the Ottoman Turks to declare war on Russia. Not wanting to fight both Persia and the Ottomans, Russia called a truce between them and Persia. This only worked for about three years, as in 1810, Persia and the Ottomans for once would team up to fight Russia. The lifelong enemies would not work well together, playing a game of... You invade! No, you invade. No, it's your turn, you invade. Fine, but don't abandon me. Oh, trust me, trust me, I won't. They totally abandoned the Persians, and to their biggest fear, a guy named Peter Kotelir Yarvensky. This Peter guy just got done beating the snot out of the Ottomans with only a few thousand men. Peter was the kind of guy that lived a red, breathed, shit, pissed, all things war. He was notorious for being a terrifying opponent who would show no mercy. And the sideburns. Oh god, <laughs> not the sideburns. The Persians walked into Russian occupied territory and eventually set up camp. During the night, Peter and his band of 2,000 men ambushed and routed the whole 40,000 Persian army. Peter then moved on to the Persian fort of Lankaran and defeated the Persians, but by the end of the battle, he had disappeared and was presumed to be dead. Did you hear that? Ah, <laughs> no, what? I've been screaming for two hours, no one's heard me, my leg's shot, there's fluid coming out of my eye, and my right jaw's broken, somebody help me. Peter would survive these wounds, but he would have a permanent limp and would be forced to retire as a soldier. He would eventually live into his 70s. After Napoleon lost his 1812 Russian campaign, the Kojar dynasty sued for peace and gave Russia back their Caucasian borderlands. The fifth and final Russo-Prussian War was started in 1826 after the death of Tsar Alexander and false reports given to Fath Ali Shah that Russia was having a civil war. So he took this opportunity and invaded his old nemesis. But there was one small problem with this plan, and that was that Russia was not in a civil war and could defeat Persia easily now. Which they did with only 34,000 Russian soldiers, and by 1828 they had once again forced Fath Ali Shah to give up even more of his Caucasian lands, and almost all of modern day Armenia and Azerbaijan. And with that, Russia and Persia didn't go to war again after this. So I guess my job here is done. Thanks for watching.